and we're back with our class guides and this week we'll be walking the holy path of the cleric welcome to the attic dungeon my name is sam and whether you want to cure wounds or inflict them i'm here to help you with everything <laughs> As per usual, this is the bit where I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you who are watching my stuff. Thank you very much. Don't forget to bribe your friends to do the same. Ah, clerics. My very first 5e character was a cleric and I've loved them ever since. So today, take a look at the cleric with me. We're going to have a look at all their base features. Uh, and I'll help you understand what makes the cleric tick. Now, first off, what does a party expect, expect from anyone who's going to play a cleric? Well, they have pretty boring expectations of you. They expect you to just keep the party alive. They don't really care what else you're up to. Just have a healing spell handy, maybe a resurrection spell or some um, anti-curse mechanics if you have them, and they'll all love you. Does that mean you have to be a healer? No, not at all. Because I have some wonderful news for you. A cleric can actually fill any combat role there is in the game. They can be frontliners, both tanky and non-tanky. They can be ranged blasters. Of course, they are amazing supports and healers and what have you. They can be a bit of a problem solver as well. Outside of combat, the only thing they might not really be suited for might be the social game. Why? Um, they need a decent investment in quite a few ability scores, so that leaves very little wiggle room to up your charisma score at the end of the day. But don't worry, I'm sure there's going to be some sorcerer or some bard in the party who can take care of that and you can carry the party with every other aspect of the game that you can cover. How come? Well, it's very simple. Domains. Domains are the cleric subclasses and there are so many of them. I haven't counted them, but that's a lot. They started out with like seven or eight in the player's handbook and it has only grown ever since. And each of them is quite specific at what it wants to do, but also grants you, hence the possibility to fill almost any combat role. To fill any combat role, there is really. Um, but of course, we're not looking at the domains today. We're going to look at the vanilla basic cleric and he might look a bit boring because the basic cleric really brings to the table what people expect of the cleric, namely support, heals, um, a fair bit of chunky tankiness, and if it needs to be, well, they can still, no, they will save your ass, period. That's what a cleric does. But the base cleric doesn't look awesome or amazing, but it's the domains, the subclasses that really make them shine. And since you start with your subclass at level one, and you get a whooping five uh, features from your subclass, you're going to discover very quickly what your cleric is capable of. But our vanilla cleric at level one starts with a D8 hit die. So that's decent. They can stand on the front line for a bit. Don't expect them to tank all day long at level one, but they can do it quite well. All clerics get light, medium armor and shield proficiency. The fact that you can combine medium armor and shield means you actually have a really good armor class at level one. Of course, that will only be topped by heavy armor wearers with a shield. Um, so you're fairly tanky on the armor class side and quite okay on the hit point side. You also get to use all simple weapons as most people do. So you get some decent stabbers and clobbers Nothing too fancy though. Um, you have Wisdom and Charisma save. So as always, there's a really good one and an okay one. The really good one here is, I believe, Wisdom, which saves you from all the nasty mind control effects and what have you. And Charisma, when you go to the higher levels, is quite okay for resisting banishment spells, which are less common. But when you get hit by one, it tends to dramatically alter the encounter that you're in. So it's good that you have a higher resistance to those, let's be honest. 
Um, you're a full caster, of course, so you get the full range of level 1 to 9 spells. Now, we're going to handle this guide a little bit differently, seeing as the cleric's uh, features, the base features, are really condensed in the first 10 levels, and the next levels are kind of repetitions and upgrades of what you already have. I'm going to go do those first, and then we'll delve into the spells a bit more into detail. Um, it's doable for the cleric. I can't do that for all classes, but for the cleric I can do it. Um, as I said, your domain really decides what you'll be doing. Um, I'll tell why in a bit, but that's why you're quite light on basic features. You have a lot of features that you're going to gain over the course of the levels. Well, a, lot, a decent amount, but like half of them are tied to your subclass, so I won't be talking about them today. Um, a spellcaster. What is your spellcasting ability? It is wisdom. So without a doubt, wisdom should be your highest ability score in about 90% of the cases. I can imagine some clerics who want to be a bit more fighty and less casty, having an equally high or maybe even higher uh, dex or strength score or whatever. Um, but usually wisdom is going to be for your preferred score. Now I mentioned strength or dex. Sam, if the cleric is a medium armor wearer, why would you bother with dexterity? Just grab a rapier and swish swish. That is true for a large part of the clerics, but there are quite a few domains that gain the heavy armor feature and some of those also gain access to martial weapons. I'm thinking of the Tempest domain, the War domain, the Forge domain, and I know for sure life gets heavy armor, but they don't get martial weapons. So there's quite a few clerics out there that receive heavy armor uh, as a possibility, and hence then, instead of going the usual um, Wisdom, Dexterity, Con, you want to go Wisdom, Strength, Con. Um, so yeah, there's that. My god, we actually find a class that doesn't automatically shoehorn all their secondary points into Dexterity and Constitution. <gasps> Such a miracle! Uh, obviously, you get spell casting at level 1, but as I said, we'll go into those details later. I'm now just going to go over the levels where you get something that isn't spell casting, right? So, level 2, you gain the Channel Divinity feature. This is basically you using your God's uh, spiritual powers to achieve a certain effect. All clerics have one effect in common, and that is Turn Undead. It's a classic uh, cleric feature, I think all the clerics in D&D in its history have had access to this feature. Uh, and what it does is it chases the undead away. A lot of undeads are immune to fear and effects like that, so this is specifically there to make them turn their tail and run. Is it super good? Yes, but only versus undead. So in a lot of cases, this is going to be useless and you will not be using your channel divinity to turn undead. But Sam, what am I going to use it for? Well, at level two, no matter what domain you picked, you will get a second use for channel divinity that is not turn undead. And you can also use it for that. So you have one use of channel divinity at level two and you either use it to turn undead or to use your subclass feature. The use recharges on a short rest as well as a long rest. You get a second charge at level 6 and a third charge all the way down at level 18. So the second charge is quite quickly it will be there, it will be online. The third charge it takes you ages, you'll probably never see it. Um, so turn undead, good in the situations where you actually have undead uh, mind you, it does break the turn effect when you punch the undead, so turn them and pick the targets. Uh, oh, by the way, the way it works is all the undead in a 30 feet uh, radius around you, I think it is, have to make a wisdom saving throw. If they fail, they have to start running away from you. It's that simple. Um, and the other, the domain effects vary wildly. They're amazing, most of them. I'm containing myself not to talk about my favorite ones. So I'll just move on to level 4, which is of course your first ability score increase, just like level 8, 12, 16 and 19 will be. There we go, don't have to talk about those levels anymore. Obviously, what do you want to do with those? Max out your wisdom. If your cleric has a weapon aspect, like some clerics have the power of punching you in the face, 
um, you should actually consider maybe buffing your strength at some point. It's possible. You don't have to actually. Nowadays with Tasha's, um, I would almost forget that Tasha's gave us stuff. But the most important thing that Tasha's gives to clerics is actually that you can choose at level 8 your... It's actually it's a domain feature, but at level eight your domain would get either better cantrips or better bonky bonk with a stick on the enemy's face. Um, I I said war domain for example, it's a war domain. Obviously they would gain an improved bonky weapon hit, but now you can choose with Tasha. If you're playing war domain but you haven't really been milleeing stuff all the time, you can just take the improved cantrip and get on with your life. So it used to be really domain bound. Now it's really flexible, so that's actually quite okay. It comes into the game pretty late, it's level 8, but I want to mention that now when we're talking about the ability scores, but it, because it will have an impact on how you build your Cleric. It's actually really good of me to mention Tasha's because I almost forgot that Cleric is obviously gain stuff from Tasha's. Uh, they gain an expanded spell list, of course, but they also gain the ability to swap out cantrips at level 4. You have a set amount of cantrips, as any class does, and every level that you gain an ability scoring cleave, you can also swap out some cantrips. Uh, I think one, actually, but that's quite okay, since you'll only have five max at higher levels. And uh, you also gain an extra use for channel divinity important. You can actually use Channel Divinity to restore a spell slot as well. The spell slot can be no higher a level than half your proficiency score, rounded up by the way. This is one of the rare cases where they don't round down. So Channel Divinity has three uses, turn on dead, your domain specific use and restoring some spell slots. It's not wow, it's not amazing, but since it resets on short rest, that's actually not bad. Once you have multiple uses, there are some domain um, uh, channel divinities that are like okay but situational, and this is actually really good for them. If your situational domain channel divinity isn't doing it, just fuel your spell slots uh, with your channel divinity every chance you get, reset it on a short rest and keep going. If you have an amazing channel divinity like the tempest cleric you'll have to choose obviously but now that we've had all the tasha stuff so at level two the extra channel divinity at level four swapping out the cantrips and at level eight choosing between a martial buff or a caster buff as i said we can continue with our normal cleric stuff so that means we move on to level five and their turn on dead gets an additional use called destroy undead um, and it's actually pretty simple and equally situational. Um, if you use turn undead and the undead, one of the undead, it's an AoE spell, fails the save and it is uh, equal or lower to a certain CR rating, the undead will just die. He will become dead again. Uh, it starts very low at level 5 with half a CR undead dropping dead and it goes up to I think level 17 yeah at level 17 you can insta kill CR4 undead so yes this is good this is an, a nice upgrade to a feature but it's equally situational if not more situational than the previous one it's great if your dungeon master decides to throw the knight of the living dead at you and have like 20 zombies around you Chances are some of those are going to meld if you wave your holy symbol around. Um, but yeah, it's an upgrade. Sure, it's a situational upgrade. Uh, level 6 is the main stuff. 7 is more spells. 8 is Azi. 9 is more spells. Level 10 brings us to the last base cleric feature actually already. And that is Divine Intervention. And this is... When it goes off, this is why your dungeon master will hate clerics. It's not because of the rather amazing spell list, all the supporting and keeping alive that you can do. No, it's because you can summon your literal god to intervene in whatever shenanigans you're up to at that point. So basically, uh, when you use divine intervention, you plead to your god you ask them for help because you're up shit creek without a paddle and you don't know how to get out of it 
How it works is very simple. You roll a percentile die and if your roll is equal to or lower than your cleric level, your god will intervene. That doesn't mean they appear and kill all the bad guys, but they will intervene. So at level 10, very simply, that means you have a 1 in out of 10 chance to summon your god. And it increases with 1% per level that you gain. Um, that's pretty low chances, but considering the fact that you're summoning a pretty all-powerful being to solve your stuff, I think that's quite okay. You can only ask them to intervene once per day and if you actually succeed in summoning them, you can't uh, ask them to intervene for seven days. There's a seven day cooldown where your god is like, nah bro, helped you out like two days ago, I'm taking a week off, toodaloodles, see you in a few. Um, the good news is that if you would ever reach level 20, this ability has an automatic success. So apart from all the crazy stuff you can do as a level 20 character, clerics have a guaranteed summon my god button. That's downright amazing. Um, and as I said, that's actually the last standard cleric features. Everything you gain in the higher levels from the base cleric stuff are upgrades from these features. More uses of channel divinities, stronger undead that you can crumble, more ability scores whatevs um as i said all the good stuff because these features don't make the cleric look like much all the good stuff is in the subclasses and i can assure you they are amazing um same kind of goes for the spell casting because now i'm going to look at the generic cleric spell list which is really good don't get me wrong it's really good uh, for for everything that you want the cleric to do but like um, the curveball spells, so to speak, are given to you by your domain. Important to know. Each So you're a spellcaster. You are a preparation spellcaster, which means that at the start of the day, you can choose which spells from the cleric spell list you want to remember for that day. And the amount that you can remember is equal to your cleric level plus your wisdom modifier. So you'll start out with like four spells at level one and it'll grow pretty quickly, actually. Um, and on top of those, so let's say you have your level 1 cleric with a plus 3 wisdom modifier, which gives you 4 spells, you will always gain extra spells that are always prepared from your domain. You're going to gain up to 5th level spells from your domain, and these are sometimes going to be cleric -y spells, sometimes are going to be total curveball spells that you would never expect the cleric to have. But so, um, so what we're going to look at now are all the cleric -y cleric spells, and all the curveball spells will appear when we're doing subclasses, really. Um, cleric cantrips three cantrips on level one. I highly advise to pick up guidance and then either sacred flame or toll the dead for your damaging cantrip. Why toll the dead? It is the highest damaging cantrip, I think, in the game. Uh, and Sacred Flame allows you to dodge cover a lot, to dodge enemy cover a lot, actually. Um, if that is something that your dungeon master takes into account a lot, cover, Sacred Flame is going to give you a very nice advantage. Guidance really is just a really good um, tiny buff spell with which you can buff people's skill rolls and saves and what have you. So it's good. And then as your third one, you can take whatever utility you need. Uh, Thaumaturgy, uh, Spare the Dying. Um, what's the other thing? Light. There we go. Thinking of light. If you don't have Dark Vision, you know. Um, then for level one spells, there's a lot of good stuff in the level one spell list for clerics, really. the the Everything you would think that a cleric can do is in that spell list. Some of the things that I highly advise you think of, you don't have to pick up all of these, you have total freedom, but you should at least pick up one or two of the following spells. Healing Word and not Cure Wounds. Why not? Healing Word has a bonus action and is ranged. Cure Wounds is a full action and requires to, you to be next to the person you want to heal. Um, that's actually a big difference here. Yes, healing wound, uh, healing, wow, healing wound. Healing word only heals for 1d4 plus your wisdom modifier and cure wounds heals for 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier. And that sounds like cure wounds is double as potent, but the chances of you rolling the high numbers are actually 
you know, there's a 50% chance that you won't heal more than he, uh, healing word does. Um, and the added benefits of the higher hit points get outweighed by the fact that it's a bonus action really badly. Like healing word as a bonus action is super strong uh, versus Q wounds as an action. If you do want a heavy healing spell at level one, go right ahead, take your wounds. But in combat, healing word is going to be more efficient because when somebody goes down, for example, you can get them back up with healing wounds and you can bong the enemy on the face or cantrip them or whatever to prevent them from killing your friend again. Whereas cure wounds is just going to raise them up to get pummeled down again. Seriously, take healing word. So yeah, healing word. Bless and bane. Whether you prefer buffing your friends or debuffing your enemies, inflict wounds and guiding bolt. If you want to deal some nice damage, guiding bolt also helps your friends out. And shield of fate. If you want to protect some squishy guy on the field or just want to tank up yourself some more with plus two armor class. Good stuff. Level two, I would advise. Well, you're going to know this. Um. The level 1 spells have a nice, well, have a decent amount of blasty spells, as you can see. You got Guiding Bolt and Inflict Wound, it's single target damage, but it's good damage. You're not going to find huge amounts of blasting spells um, on the Cleric list. Again, domains, that's what they come from. Uh, so what I'm going to touch upon here are mainly support and utility spells with the occasional blasty spell if I find one. So on level 2 there's stuff like aid which is always good fun. It's a concentrationless buff that lasts for 8 hours. It's good certainly at level 2. Blindness deafness can be a really potent debuff if your enemies are not constitution heavy uh, dudes or dudettes really. Uh, enhance ability, nice and flexible, hold person, lesser restoration, your first cleansing spell, so to speak. Prayer of healing, if you want the strong out of combat healing, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, prayer of healing is uh, a very slow but potent healing spell. Should not be used in combat, stuff is going to beat you dead before you cast it. Silence, zone of truth, and of course, spiritual weapon, the cleric's beat stick. Uh, spiritual weapon is good. Why? It gives you an extra attack and it's concentrationless. What it does specifically, you summon a fancy looking weapon, your choice. It attacks some dude for 1d8 plus your wisdom uh, modifier. So it works like a regular weapon. You have to do an attack roll which uses your spellcasting modifier and, you, and your proficiency bonus by the way. And you hit for weapon damage a d8 plus relevant ability score. What makes this better is that this weapon sticks around for quite a while and every turn you can use a bonus action to move it 20 feet and whack someone again. So this is basically an offhand attack. You know, two-weapon fighting, dual wielding works with using your bonus action to smack someone with your offhand weapon, but you don't get the ability score bonus then. Cleric say hi, you silly peasants, here's my god's chosen weapon. It is going to smite you for the next minute, I think it is. Um, could be longer, I don't know, I haven't checked it. And it's not concentration based, so you can have this floating around and still put Bless on your team or Shield of Fate or whatever cool spell you have that requires concentration. That's why this spell is a Cleric's favorite. It actually gives you damage in your turn no matter what you're doing with your other actions. If you're using your action to cast a spell, bonus actions, smack them with a weapon. If you're using healing word, okay, the weapon won't act this turn, but you still have your main action to burn somebody with righteous fire. Spiritual weapon. Eight out of eight clerics recommend it. Uh, level three spells, bestow curse, a wonderful piece of flexible debuffing. This is really good. It can cripple enemies if you make the, uh, the correct choices. And it's not as cleric -y as people expect. So the cleric obviously has all the healy spells, but they also have quite a few of those like darker spells. The cleric is quite capable of cursing you at level one. Nick, um, inflict wounds does not deal radiant damage either, ladies and gentlemen. The cleric can heal, the cleric can harm, the cleric can curse your ass until you cry for your mommy. Beacon of hope. I love beacon of hope personally because it maximizes any healing spell you might throw out. Um, 
and that's really fun that's all i can say really if you're not like one cleric gets this as a benefit as well so for them uh, i think it's a life cleric obviously for them this is garbage but any other cleric is like ah i really need to get into healing now because we need it but i want my healing to be efficient because that's the usual problem with in combat healing in uh, fifth edition it's not that efficient um but beacon of hope will make it efficient Obviously, you also have Dispel Magic here. You have Daylight. Daylight is perfect for dispelling darkness caused by all those Hexblade Edge Boys with Devil's Sight. Daylight is good for when it's dark somewhere. Like, it also dispels magical darkness as long as the magical darkness is of an equal or lower level than the spell slot you use to cast Daylight. Mass Healing Word, because why heal one person if you can heal... What's it? more than one night can't remember how many it is but it's a good healing spell it's it's but still a bonus action it still heals for a smaller amount but it heals a multitude of people combine this with your beacon of hope and well yeah you can make the magic happen good because you're a spellcaster you obviously also get revivify here the first resurrection spell there is uh spirit guardians which is often combined with spirit weapons so we have a weapon flying about and like two spooky dudes smacking stuff left and right the spirit guardians however do use concentration but together they give you a lot of attacking power as a passive really because the weapon is on a bonus action and you don't have that many bonus action stuff apart from healing word and the guardians just whack stuff when they when enemies start a turn next to them or run next to them so it's a lot of passive damage output that we people would not expect from a cleric um, oh, I also wrote down tongues because I like tongues. There's always these dungeon masters go like, yes, they're talking a language that none of you understand. That's the perfect moment for you to go, why well, actually, I have tongues. So yes, I understand what they're saying. It's perfectly fun. Uh, and you don't always have to take battle support spells. You, you can prepare and unprepare according to what you need. So take some crazy spell now and then you never know that you might need it. Uh, level 4 is... The, your utility becomes larger as the levels go up. You find um, less and less blasty spells and more utility spells. But level 4 has freedom of movement. Very situational, but very good in those situations, allowing you to break free from any type of bonds, really. Uh, banishment, always good. You, you're not here anymore. And Death Ward, situational, but if your dungeon master has it out for one of the characters, this is how you save them. Level 5 has Geese. Your first strong mind control curse, I think. You don't get other stuff like command and I forgot the level two. Oh, suggestion, you don't get those as a cleric, uh, I think. But geese is a really strong uh, mind control curse, actually. It's not really mind control, but you put orders into place. Uh, holy weapon, I love holy weapon as a buff. First, it buffs a weapon to concentration, though. That's a bit iffy. Uh, it buffs the weapon to make it stronger and spank stuff and then you can make the holy weapon kind of explode and blind all the enemies around it. I think it's good fun. Uh, insect plague, again the darker side of the cleric showing up and eating your enemy's crops and the flesh of their bones. Summon celestial because every class needs a good summoning spell and scrying is one of those weird utility spells that if, if your campaign revolves about you guys not knowing where the bad guy is or, or you need to find some person but you know what they look like or who they are or whatever scrying can actually break campaigns uh, the more you know about your enemy the better the higher the chances are that they will fail that are safe and that you can kind of plant this little spy next to them that's the scrying does it makes this little invisible spy appear next to the target that you're trying to scry um and this can potentially give you a lot of information. So when you look at it, you might be not my kind of spell, but it is potentially campaign breaking. Just depends on the campaign. We come to the higher levels. Level six have harm and heal. They do equal amounts of pain or healing. They're becoming like the more extreme versions of cure wounds and inflict wounds. Here, here we have harm and heal. And you have heroes feast. People who know that I love eight should not be surprised that I also love Heroes Feast. It does the same as Aid, but better. It gives you a lot more hit points to your party, and it stacks with Aid because it's a different spell. It also costs you a thousand gold each time you cast it, but by the time you get to level six spells, you should have plenty of money in your pockets. 
At level 7, instead of Summon Celestial, we have Conjure Celestial, so a better summoning spell. Firestorm to rain down some good old-fashioned judgment on those Hedons. Uh, regeneration and Resurrection as two very important healing spells here. Uh, resurrection allowing a bit more flexibility than Revivify, which only, which only allowed you to bring people back that died in the last minute with 1 HP or something. Resurrection brings you gives you a broader um, chance of resurrecting someone. It opens up the time slot and the conditions for resurrecting them. Then we come, of course, to the heavyweight spells, your level 8 and level 9 spells. Now at level 8, I highly advise Earthquake and Holy Aura. Why Earthquake? Well, if you want to experience what it feels like to bring down Sodom and or Gomorrah yourself, well, this is a spell for you. Why? This thing has a 500 feet range and the spell itself is an area of 100 feet. Uh, not radius this time, by the way. It's like uh, you use Earthquake anywhere within 500 feet that you can see. Sure, whatever. And uh, it causes a 100 feet long fissure, uh, crack, tremor, whatever, to appear in the area and everything happens around that tremor. No, that's a pretty damn long tremor. It causes fissures that people can obviously fall in or get stuck in. It deals damage to buildings. It brings down the house. Well, more than one house. It's a lot of fun. And then my personal favorite, actually apart from Earthquake messing up a large area, is Holy Aura because it can very much save lives in combat. Holy Aura is a concentration spell. Uh, last one minute and with it all the creatures it's a 30 feet radius this time around so 30 feet every side from you all the creatures that you want in that aura have advantage on all their saving throws and all enemies have disadvantage on all their attacks against them so no matter what the dm is tossing at you as long as it isn't power word kill um you have advantage on it or they have disadvantage on it and uh, if it's an attacker or a caster they they don't have to be in the aura the person that you're protecting has to be in the aura they also shed some night light nice light might be handy in the cave when it's dark all the way up at level 17 no 15 that's 15. um so yeah that'll work it's a really strong protective spells for a uh, spell for those heavy heavy battles and then you have the level nine cleric spells of course um they're not wish and true polymorph like there are a certain kind of game breaking spells like those two and the cleric does not get access to those but the cleric does get access to a few other really good spells uh, there's gate which allows you to kind of go anywhere at any point yeah it's it's a pretty big ult it's the ultimate teleportation spell i think uh, it's a one-way trip though if i'm not mistaken gate but it is a very strong we need to get there now type of spell has very little restrictions uh, true resurrection which is the best resurrection spell in the game um there are very few limits on what you cannot resurrect with true resurrection and of course you have mass heal which does exactly what it says it heals for a large mass it heals for a whooping 700 hit points distributed as you wish over the targets within range blah 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 this is even enough to heal up my uh, max hp build from years ago like twice over um it's pretty insane actually and you have astral projection that's one of those typical level nine spells that rewards creativity i think um so yeah those are the spells for the cleric i picked out a few to talk about all the others that i mentioned go and look them up they're usually good picks for a cleric they will be complemented by your domain spell so with this you're more than well equipped to make your own cleric and get to work i'll see you all next time in the attic dungeon